At the beginning of 2020, all it seemed that we were talking about was the fact that the world was on fire, or at least it was in Australia. Now here we are nine months later, and it really hasn't changed. I mean, the fires have spread to different locations, California, BC, almost everywhere as you look, the fires are still spreading. You just have to look up at the sky, and you can, you can see it in the air. So there's the plumes for the fire, the smoke, they're, they're, you can see it from thousands of kilometers away. We can't forget what fire brings. I mean, fire brings change. Fire brings new life. In some cases, fire is what makes us stronger. And as I said, from all the smoke in the air, this is this is what happens. You get these really nice sunsets, right? So we know why that is. It's got to do with light passing through the atmosphere and it's scattering and things like that. But what I'm trying to say here is that this course isn't an easy one. I really have to stress that. You are into the fire right now. And if you haven't noticed it already, you gotta get going, okay? So I can show you some stuff, I can teach you some stuff, but ultimately, you gotta put the work in. So that's really what I'm here to do. I just wanna remind you, don't let up. We're here to help. Come see us in the tutorials, come see us in the help sessions. Any questions you got, we're here to help. Now, what are we actually here to talk about today? Well, we're gonna to cover topic four, regression, or you could talk really and say that's like Excel. I've looked around, and to be honest, there's way more videos out there that describe how to use Excel than I can summarize here. Besides, everybody's got a slightly different version. So I wanna talk about something that is important in this class that isn't necessarily covered in that topic, but I definitely wanna stress it. If you wanna see more information about you know, how to work with Excel, we do have a video online and you can find any other number of ones out there. So the example I'm going to be using is this thing here, absorbance. So just in a nutshell, you've got light passing through a cuvette and we're measuring how much light is being able to pass through. So it's kind of like this example here. So if you take this source of light and you just have something behind it and I put a sample in the way, I mean, you could probably still see right through it because there's not much that water is doing to absorb that light. But if I take a different solution and put that in the way, well, actually you can probably still see the letters, right? But it is reducing the amount of light that's going through. So these are the kinds of experiments that we would do in lab. You know, you'd be making some stock solutions, different concentrations. This is over a very wide range. And you can notice that each of these is stepping up by a factor of 10. The, the highest solution over there is like really, really dark. And it fades to a point where it kind of looks like water. And then from there, we'd have one of these instruments, an absorbance spectrometer, a very simple one. Sample will go into the cuvette and light is passing through it. You can read it from there. Now, while we won't do those experiments in lab, we can look at the data. And to be honest, that's much more important. So if I took the solutions I just showed you and plotted the concentration versus the absorbance, you'll get this plot that you can get here. This plot was made in Excel and yeah, I kind of fancied it up to be, you know, changing the colors. I guess the first thing you notice is that it's not a straight line, and that makes sense. I mean, the absorbance kind of maxes out, although not necessarily. We're gonna talk spectroscopy at a later topic in this class, but right here, let's just focus on the line. So you can see maybe a straight line over here, but then it plateaus out. What we're interested in doing is getting a trend line, getting a relationship that we can use to plot unknown absorbances and get unknown concentrations from there. So what if we were to plot this curve in a slightly different way? So what I'm gonna do is change this scale to a log. You can just click a button in Excel. And what it does is it puts the whole data on a log scale. So what it really does is it, it winds out the low end curve so you can see more of the points instead of having them clustered at the end, working your way all the way up to the top. So the higher data points over here represent that really dark sample. And then working our way on the end, like I said, this is almost water. You can tell that the, the absorbance is barely changing. This is the region that's more important. So that's where there's, there's more sensitivity. There's a change in the signal in response to a change in concentration. But the problem is that I'm kind of missing the interesting points. So if we go back to our solution, what we've done is we've made too many samples that are too dark, too many samples that are too light. There's nothing in the linear region. So we need a few extra points. And that's exactly what we've done right here. So you can take the same data and plot it now with a few additional data points and fill in the gaps right over there. Okay, remember this is still on a log scale, so it doesn't necessarily show the linear relationship. So let's just focus back 
into the region that counts and I'll put it back onto a, a normal axis. All right, now it's looking straighter, but well, it's still not straight. Up here, you've got data points that are clearly off of the straight line trend. So if I were to try to fit this line, you'd know that you'd be way off. So what I'm gonna do is just get rid of those data points because I know that they're not part of the linear trend. Down here, yeah, that's, all right, starting to look straighter now. So we've got what looks like a nice straight line and all I'm gonna do is put a trend line into there as you would do in Excel. So we get a nice straight line, a relationship where I forced the y-intercept to be zero and, and you know, an, an R squared, like the closer you get to one, the better the fit is supposed to be. It looks good, but there's still issues with it. These higher points are still actually a little bit below the line. So what if I were to exclude a couple more points and see what happens from there? Well, what happens is you get a new trend line. And actually you can see the R squared value is much higher. So we're fitting this line now just to these bottom points up here, up to a concentration of 10. It really is on you to figure out where the points are linear and not. And yeah, there's, there's ways of doing that mathematically. But for the purpose of this class here, you really just got to eyeball it. Don't make the mistake of just plotting all of the data when it's clearly off of that straight line. So you have to decide where the straight line is, where it's not in the linear region, and plot accordingly. So that's topic four in a nutshell. I mean, you do have to be familiar with Excel and a reminder, you're allowed to use Excel instead of a calculator. So I, I really do favor it. So the more you're accustomed to using that program, the easier it's gonna be for you. And, and why don't I throw you just another reminder, you gotta keep doing the problems. So do the problems that are presented in topic four as well. You might get some of them showing up in your quizzes. And the last thing I'll mention is that this week, it's, it's time to step it up. We're gonna go through a lot of stuff this week. This is the easy one, but the, the topics that we're about to present next, these are probably the most important ones of the course. They're not gonna go away. They're gonna keep squeezing their way into problems as we work our way down the line. So make sure you're keeping up with what's going on here. Come to tutorial, come to help session if you're finding it difficult. All right, see you in the next one.